All right, so we're sitting here looking at uh, campus. We're looking towards the library from um, Aliso Hall from the Dolphin Fountain um, and our, our typical uh, awesome campus here. Now our campus was built in uh, or completed in 1932, built in the wake of the Great Depression. And energy has played a key part of our campus since we started. What we're looking at right here, so we see the Dolphin Fountain on the left here, and then we see the original power building and then the off to the right, we can see the, the, the well where we filmed the movie The Ring. This is on the top of Peanut Hill. This is the X-Current Siphon. This is the, the exhaust fume for the, um, uh, the original power plant. So normally the power plant would take all its steam, shunt it around to seven different laundries on campus. This was a cogeneration plant. This was a, a heavy crude oil uh, sort of bunker fuel type burning oil power plant uh, when it was opened, when the, when the hospital was opened in 1932, the original power source. That was fairly quickly replaced with a little bit more modern um, energy production. And that sort of held, held for a while. And then we move over to um, essentially the site of the current power plant. The current power plant had a couple different iterations, but most recently, this is a gas a high, what's called a high efficiency turbine, natural gas fired power plant. So as far as fossil fuel power plants go, this is uh, pretty efficient and pretty relatively speaking, low emission um, uh, uh, CO2. Uh, this really went into operation just before campus became campus. So if you look at our campus logo, it says established 2002. This was established before then and was basically our source of power. Now, the key thing that was happening here was Enron. So Enron was coming to the California marketplace. There was all this pressure to uh, divest from, from monopolies and all this kind of stuff. And so the idea was, hey, we should, we should have a free market. The free market should be in control of our energy portfolio in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, that was fine until it became clear that Enron was essentially a Ponzi scheme. Enron goes bankrupt. We have all these massive blackouts and brownout, brownouts across the, the, um, the state of California. And so as campus, as CSUCI was opening in 2002, or, or getting ready to open, I should say, in the late 90s, early, early 2000s, there was great worry about brownouts and power. So we entered into a contract with this now plant no longer controlled by Southern California Edison, not controlled by our utility, but rather a private power um, company. And so we entered into a contract to buy the first megawatt of electricity produced. We would have the first right of refusal, meaning campus would always have power, would always have energy. Um, that sounded like a great plan in, you know, 2000, 2001, but it's, it became a albatross around our neck. So it's great to have guaranteed power, but by, by entering into this long-term power purchasing agreement, we could not afford to do any additional um, sources of power. We couldn't get any greener um, uh, sources of power. Uh, as we've come to the end of that contract, and this has become more of a, we would call a peaker plant, which is used only when we need power, um, we've now switched. So we now have the current contract. And so now uh, we have just, or in the process of completing, I don't know if we're quite exactly finished with the initial installation, but we're very close to the installation of the um, solar panel field. So this solar farm is a contract with uh, Duke Energy. And this is this new type of power purchase arrangement, meaning we agree to a long-term contract, a fixed rate per kilowatt for electricity. And we're guaranteed that the, the cost of that energy will not change over the course of the, con the multi-decade length of the contract. And so these are, these are uh, desirable because in this case, there is no upfront cost. So CSUCI or whoever it is, the, the homeowner or whatever, there's no upfront cost. But, we, but the, the uh, installers of the solar uh, energy reap um, uh, guaranteed returns for a fixed amount of time. So that's the, that's the economic calculus here. Um, so we are, we, so this, this installation began during the pandemic. We have this awesome field of solar power um, units. Uh, 
and this is going to be supplying campus power. Um, now, this obviously is solar power, so we're not supplying power in the nighttime, but nevertheless, we're supply, supplying power to the campus uh, during uh, most sunny hours of the day. Um, and yeah, and so that this, this is our, our fantastic new uh, solar array. We hope to be able to walk around in here, um, but in any event, this is a, a fantastic resource, and this is helping to reduce our carbon footprint regardless of how much money we are or are not spending, getting more installed solar, getting more installed um, uh, power sources that are not fossil fuel dependent makes it more realistic and reduces the installation cost broadly writ for other insulations, both small insulations, for example, over your home or, or an individual building, as well as large scale um, municipal scale power installations that, that this would be an example of. We're trying to do all kinds of wonderful things here, such as install pollinator plants, etc., around the periphery of, of these arrays. Um, but, uh, but, but we need more of this. We need more of this across this, the state. We need more of this across the U S to meet our low carbon, uh, decarbonization goals for our power system. And uh, we're happy this is finally, it's only taken us, you know, about 17 years to get this uh, going, but we're happy that even though it's in a, a power purchase agreement, at least we are now generating solar, solar power, electricity from solar power here at CSUCI.